was about to do a bad, bad thing. I knew it. I just couldn't help it. As soon as I saw that big, fat hand reach up for the last two chocolate chip cookie nuggets from the sample tray, I knew it was my signal. I was going for the kill. I'm a bad girl, and I can prove it. It's something we struggle with daily. It eats us up and causes us stress and anger. Annoying people. You know those people, they cut in line, are rude to you at the office or at the restaurant, cut you off in traffic, talk loudly about obnoxious things, play loud music when you're trying to concentrate, interrupt you, I could go on and on. Lori Nataro decided a new, th that a new perspective on others would solve her problem. Her new mantra, I love everybody. Let's see how it works out. I love everybody like, by no Lori Nataro. I'm not exactly a people person, not exactly. You see, when I was born, God gave me an ounce of patience that I was supposed to last me a lifetime, but as it turns out, I used it all up in the first week. <laughs> I'm not indiscriminately mean. I must be provoked first. I would classify myself as a pointer outer of extraordinary acts of foolishness. Some people would call these experiences meltdowns, but I would rather consider them opportunities to enlighten. For example, if you're sitting behind me in a movie and you feel the need to converse as freely as if you were in your living room, I will shh you and then I will ask you for $10. I cannot grasp the need to talk in a movie theater. If you cut me off in traffic like you've got someone in the passenger seat whose severed limb is floating around in an egg loop cooler in your lap, then suddenly and inexplicably slam on your brakes for no apparent reason, I will scream maniacally and point my finger at you. If you try to sneak two weeks with the groceries to the express line and think that no one will notice, I will look at your cart, look at you, and then shake my head in, in utter and obvious disgust. I am done tolerating your type. I mean it. I have the ability to count to 15 and I will use it on you. <laughs> if I happen to be looking out the window and I see you allow your dog to take a poop in my yard, I will run outside with a pen and paper and a query. Can I, hey, can I have your address? Because my dog will probably have to crap in the next hour or two and I bring her to your house to do it. So I guess I am mean. I can admit that much. I hatched a brilliant, brilliant, magnificent plan. I would immediately embark on a life as a nice people person person. Really, I said to myself, it can't take that much energy to be nice. A whole lot less energy than being angry and hostile and frustrated nearly every time you encountered someone of the foolish, which could realistically be 60 times in one single minute if you were at the movies, the grocery store, driving someplace. All you had to do was be nice, smile, and nod your head. And sometimes toss in a, my, what a pretty dress, or aren't you delightful? So I practiced smiling and nodding, and what a piece of cake! To think I could have been doing this all along. After a couple of hours, I felt I was ready to start a new phase in life, appropriately titled, I Love Everybody. And it was going to be a good day to test out my new niceness, especially since I was headed to Costco to pick up my nephew's birthday cake for his party. I love everybody. Two miles from Costco. All is going well until a Chevy two-ton crosses two empty lanes of traffic to seek one in front of me and then reduces its speed to that of Fred Flintstone's car. As I passed the truck, I smiled and nodded, aren't you delightful? I said to him as he stuck his big filthy tongue into his cheeks and vigorously moved it around as he raised his eyebrows repeatedly. I laughed through my smiling clenched teeth, nice, <laughs> I love most everybody. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I say to the people passing by who smiled at me, had some sort of visible alignment to the challenge or were in my way, which I figured would earn me, and me more karma nice points as I had a lot of catching up to do. It was almost noon and at Costco that translates to free hours divorce lunch. So I got in line waiting for my free whatever it was and it was almost my turn. There were only two girls that looked to be in their early 20s ahead of me. At that precise moment, a high, sharp-pitched noise erupted from in front of me that could have been used as an ear portal and repeatedly stabbed my brain. Bring, bring. That's you. Bring, bring. Stab, stab. It's totally not me. Bring, bring. Stab, stab. Answer the stupid phone, I said silently as I tried to vein and turn my head to avoid the auditory assault. Finally, I forced to cut my hands over my ears. Then the first girl finally opened and her fishing net of a purse and began to dig through to find the source. 
She grabbed it, unfolded it, and held it to her ear. Hello? Hello? They hung up. Oh, maybe they'll call back. Cherry, raspberry, peach, or blueberry? I don't know, what are you gonna get? I don't know, what are you gonna get? The blueberry, it's the best, just get that please, you two very delightful girls in pretty dresses. I said as I felt the uncontrollable desire to cover my head and rock back and forth. This is a skirt, not a dress. Blueberry, the sample lady mm -hmm. handed them, a little paper pill cup and walked away. I love everybody, but some people are simply undeserving of love. I needed to hurry. I got to the bakery counter, and as the baker was in the process of getting my cake, another customer, a lady with big hair, frosted in chunks, wearing a sleeveless Oxford shirt with very tanned arms like tree trunks and far too much pugent perfume, came to the counter and yelled, waving her diamond-encrusted hand to the baker lady, Ma'am, ma'am, I have I only have one question. This will just take a second. I'll be right with you. I'm sure this girl can wait. This will only take a second, and it's important. That carrot cake you have over there? Do you have any without walnuts? I can't eat walnuts. I'm peanut sensitive. I took a deep breath. Those aren't our cakes. I don't know what they have in them. They come from the vendors. My tongue gets big and very swollen. I have a reaction of an allergy and it can almost kill me. Maybe you should try chocolate cake then? No, I can't. I'm on a diet. The big armed peanut hater turned her cart and rolled away before I could walk over and punch her. Now finally, with cake in hand, I sped toward the exit. I was making really good time. I almost, I was almost through the freezer section when in my speedy progress came to a complete halt due to the lady in front of me, pushing her cart at snail's pace. Her arms crossed over the handle of the cart as she leaned on it like a very lazy person she apparently was. I tried to get around her several times, but oncoming traffic in the freezer section was a bottleneck. I couldn't get around her, and she was making no effort whatsoever to pick up the pace, and I was stuck. I tightly clutched the handle of my own cart, chanting with a very clenched jaw over and over again like a mantra, I love everybody, I love everybody, I love everybody, until I saw a braking cart traffic ahead and geared myself, getting ready to make a break for it. I jerked forward, clipping the slow lady's heel in the process. When I was merely two steps behind her, I could no longer hold it in. Bounty, my bounty paper towel of patience could sop up no more. I had enough of the walnut lady, the cell phone girls, the truck guy, and now the slow walker, and I could take no more. And I let it out loud and clear to the slow walker who could absolutely hear, here's an idea, why don't you drop on all fours and claw through the store? That might just be slower. Hmm. And it worked. She did indeed hear me. She turned to look at me, although she couldn't turn too much because that would have ripped the tube that was connecting to her oxygen tank which was sitting in her cart, right out of her nose. Right out of her nose. And both nostrils too. <laughs> Those tubes looked pretty short to me as she leaned over to make sure they stayed in her to keep her well, alive. I knew I just RSVP'd my own personal spot in hell, right next to the skin pit across from the pool of sin. 40 minutes into nice, in my nice person experiment and I was already out of the game. I ducked down inside the aisle, waiting until the witnesses to my meltdown had disappeared through the store as I should be ashamed of myself. I couldn't even be nice for a whole hour. That's when I finally looked up and found myself right back in the freezer department, square in front of the sample ladies who were busy frying, toasting, and handing out free food. Free food. Well, why not, I said to myself as I walked over to the sample lady, whose crowd was the smallest. Although I couldn't help but notice a big frosted head sticking out like a sore thumb. I smiled my biggest grin I had all day, and when I saw the sample lady was cutting up delicious looking cookies and nodded at her as I helped myself to one. Someone from behind me bumped into me without an excuse me or pardon me, and I saw a big, tan, diamond encrusted arm that looked awfully familiar reach up to the sample tray and grab two and grab two pieces of pieces of cookie bites like a goblin, then suddenly retreat almost as if on cue. I turned around and there she was, her big frosted head opening wide to pop in those cookie bits. I waited until she chewed a couple of times and I saw her swallow. I was a bad girl, a bad girl with nothing to lose. These are the most wonderful cookies I've ever eaten in my life, I said as loudly as I could, then turned to the frosted chewing head who nodded vigorously in agreement. 
It was then that I embarked on a huge opportunity to enlighten with a bold-faced, nutty lie. Don't you just love chocolate chip walnut cookies? I am mm. crazy about these walnuts. I tried to love everybody, but sometimes you just have to have a little hate too. And with that, I turned back to the sample lady and smiled. That is a delightful hairnet and apron you're wearing. <laughs>